this place But I don't wanna leave here If you're just gonna stay Changing like the seasons Been wasting all this time Should be like satellites Cast me on the sky Believe our faith For another day Riding these horizons We'll find our way We'll leave our faith And sorry about that. There you go. Hello, everybody. My name is Connor Vagel, uh, and we are here once again with some College League of Legends action as Northeastern takes on NIU. Both teams coming into the match 7-1, and one, tied for first place in the Esports Collegiate Conference. On the side of Northeastern, the bands are going to be Rel, uh, Orn, and Anivia. Then NIU took away the Camille, the Seraphine, and the Udir. Uh, now, we do see what uh, Northeastern wants to go with here. Uh, we'll go through the lineups, we'll go through the playoff implications here in just a minute, but uh, looking at this one, it is going to be the Senna locked in for the side of Northeastern, something they've seen a lot of priority on lately, uh, and it'll be very interesting to see if NIU has an answer to that one figured on out. 
looking here. 12 seconds left for NIU to make their first pick of this uh, best of three series. They are going to hover that misfortune, uh, something we've seen them play in the past, as well as in scrims into the Senate, and that's going to be locked in by the Huskies. Well, actually, by the NIU Huskies. Uh, one thing that we won't be able to do today is call out that Husky name as both teams here come in with the Husky moniker. Hacker, I'm going to be picked up here for PCH. Uh, very likely going into the jungle. We haven't been seeing that in the top lane very often lately. And Ivern going to be the answer to that one. Now, Set going to be picked up as well. More than likely, that is going to be Senna Set in the bot lane uh, for Ask for SoundCloud and Days, as uh, that is something that we've seen them pick up in past collegiate season matches. Uh, NIU now looking to make a pick here to answer in likely the support role, um, though we do have to be wary as that set could be flexed towards the top lane, and it is going to be NIU now going ahead and picking up the Blitzcrank to go into the set. Thank you guys for calling out the mute. Uh, my apologies. We did fix that very quickly. Um, the next band is going to be the Echo away from Alonis there as uh, NIU going to make sure that they have the mid lane priority here, likely going to look to make the counter pick there, or they may go towards the top side with that one for Alpha Squirtle 81. Northeastern with just four seconds to make another ban here. They're going to take away the Oriana, so this mid lane champion pool is going to start to be pinched very heavily. NIU going to have to make another pick up here, and uh, we'll see what they want to take off the board. It could be the Irelia, and there it is. Irelia going to come off the board, uh, meaning that uh, that top lane uh, carry type of pick that Flying Hippo 2 likes to play. Uh, a little bit pinched here with the Camille and the uh, Irelia both off the board. Could go to something like a Fiora, as that is pretty strong in the current meta but will be very interesting to see how this one plays out. Nar going to be taken off the board, so yes, another top lane ban coming out from the side of Northeastern, and this means that we're going to see uh, Alpha Squirtle on something different from what he's played. I believe he has one game of Karma so far in the collegiate season. Otherwise, he's been playing the Nar and the Orn so far. Uh, Northeastern says we want to put him on something that he might not necessarily be comfortable with, and he'll go with the Gragas. So that will be Gragas in the top lane, almost certainly. Viego is the hover here. If that is picked, we would have to go and remake Champ Select, as that has been disabled. There it is. It could be the Scion instead into it. That is an eligible pick, uh, but Viego, as we mentioned, is still disabled. We'll see what they want to go with here. And is going to be the Scion answered into the Gragas. So something very tanky. And uh, they've definitely put up a few tanks here. Uh, the Diana would give them some assassination and magic damage. Uh, but definitely a very tanky composition. Especially when Daisy comes out for the Ivern uh, on the side of Northeastern. Uh, they will have the carry in the... Uh, in the Diana really actually no Silas wow so uh, Silas will be relied on for the magic damage as well as some of that uh, some of that uh, more damage threat but uh, with Senna being a little slower um, CC based a uh, little bit supportive AD carry there's not really a true carry coming out here from the side of Northeastern very interesting on their draft Cassiopeia going to be the answer into that Silas for Space Marine 18, something he's been comfortable on. Uh, so we will see how he pilots that Cassiopeia here in the mid lane. Looking across, it will be the standard composition. We know that uh, on the side of uh, Northeastern, they occasionally like to swap their jungle and support when uh, the draft allows for it. And it does look like that's going to be the case uh, or sorry, not going to be the case quite yet, as with 20 seconds, that is going to be the lock. They will have Scion for Flying Hippo. Ivern will be piloted by Stale Bagel. Silas will be Alonus. Uh, Senna will be Daze. And Set will be piloted by Ask for SoundCloud. On the side of NIU, we're going to see Gragas up in the top lane for Alpha Squirtle 81. PCH is going to pilot the Hecarim. Uh, Space Marine 18 will pilot that Cassiopeia. Misfortune will be under the control of Summoner XD. And Crix GG will round out the lineup in 
or on that Blitzcrank, something we haven't seen lately this season, but is one of his favorite picks. Now let's go ahead and check out the starting lineups for these teams. We already kind of mentioned it, but let's go ahead and go through. In the top lane for NIU, it's going to be Alpha Squirtle 81. PTH is going to be in the jungle. Space Marine 18 will be the mid laner. The bot lane will be uh, Summoner XD and Crix GG. They're coached by Garmore, whereas on the side of Northeastern, the lineup looks like this. In the top lane, it's going to be Flying Hippo 2. Stale Bagel will be the jungler. Alonis will be the mid laner. Daze is the bot lane along with Ask for SoundCloud at the support. They're coached by Bravo. And as we mentioned, they may occasionally look to swap Stale Bagel and Ask for SoundCloud depending on the matchup. They also run a six man roster. So in very, excuse me, very off circumstances, they may uh, look to bring in Ask for SoundCloud in the jungle and uh, they may have a substitute come in on the support role. Additionally, let's go ahead and look real quick at the standings in the Esports Collegiate Conference. As you notice now, three teams are locked into the playoffs out of that four-team tie at the top of the conference. With Akron's win earlier this week, though, that means that Buffalo has not locked themselves in as they don't have the tiebreaker over, uh, there you go, sorry, over the uh, Akron Zips here. Um, however, Miami and Northeastern both do have that tiebreaker, as does NIU. Uh, Buffalo, with a win tonight, would put themselves into the playoffs. Uh, then it would just be seeding that we're playing for. And speaking of which, here is what the current playoff picture looks like as the Zips are in the hunt, but the Bulls from the Buffalo are that first seed based on the tie breaks. NIU then sitting in the uh, fourth seed would take on Buffalo on March 20th at 2 p.m. for that best of three semifinals. Miami and Northeastern currently locked in the second and third seeds. They would face off as well, uh, depending on the results of these upcoming matches. Uh, NIU looks to uh, finish off the season strong here against Northeastern. Then they play Miami next or on Saturday. And then on the Saturday following, they'll finish off the season against Eastern Michigan. Northeastern obviously has NIU tonight. Um, and then they have a couple of uh, middle of the pack opponents to finish off the season as do uh, Buffalo and Miami outside of Miami's NIU matchup. Um, have a couple of middle of the pack opponents. So uh, we would expect that NIU will have to control their own destiny and play uh, play to get that second seed, but uh, very interesting to see how that one comes out. Sorry so much for uh, having that technical difficulty and getting up a little bit late here, uh, but we should already look to be getting into game very quickly here as uh, those three minutes did go by very uh, speedily here for the uh, for the matchup here between NIU and Northeastern, your double Husky matchup uh, to see who is the superior Husky in the Esports Collegiate Conference. Looking across the board, summoner spells are going to be pretty uh, standard. T uh, teleports from all four solo laners, uh, heal and ignite in the bot lane. We do see Hecarim going with the ghost instead of the flash, as is common for him. As far as the runes, we're going to see on the side of the Scion. It is going to be Grasp for both top laners, actually. Uh, Ivern going to be running the Summon Airy compared to Hecarim's Conqueror. Pretty standard there. Silas will have the Fleet Footwork compared to the Ca uh, Conqueror on Cassiopeia. Senna running Glacial Augment, as is standard. Press the attack on Misfortune. And then the set will be running Phase Rush compared to the... Uh, to the aftershock here of blitzcrank one thing of note is that uh, there has been kind of an early game uh type of uh, commonality that niu has noticed among this uh among this northeastern roster so it'll be interesting to see if they want to play it out in a certain way um indeed they do uh end up Hanging on to what I would believe here is possibly a five stack Welcome in the uh, in the ju jungle there. They were looking to possibly get an invade here with the Blitzcrank. And that set could be in a rough spot as uh, if NIU does look to make that hook. It is going to be pinged away as that hook was spotted by the side of Northeastern. And NIU will just back away from that one. 
It looks like it may be fasting Senna here for the side of Northeastern. As you notice, the uh, Senna has picked up the support item to start it off here, so uh, very likely going to be uh, doing minimal farming here in the bot lane and allowing Set to pick up most of that uh, CS. On the side of NIU, uh, Dorn's Ring is going to be the pickup for Gragas. Uh, corrupting or Challenging Smite, sorry, is going to be the one coming out from the Hecarim. Uh, it does look like two. NIU is starting on the top side. This is pretty common against an Ivern, seeing as he'll likely uh, want to start up his uh, just uh, procs, proc, sorry, his blue buff, and then run to try to steal the red buff. If it's already taken by NIU, that can be really a waste of Ivern's time here, um, and they will indeed go ahead and go for that one. Now, we do see, uh, as we were mentioning, it's going to be the Chilling Smite on the side of the Ivern against uh, the Challenging Smite for the Hecarim. And uh, then we do see the Steel Shoulder Guards come out for Blitzcrank as compared to the, uh, the uh, Doran Shield here for the set. Senna actually, uh, yep, just leaving the CS here for the set. NIU... Uh, Doing pretty evenly in the farm. Able to get a little bit of damage already here onto Asper Sound Cloud. Uh, or sorry, onto Days, my apologies. As uh, they are able to take the nice trade here. Nice flash coming forward here from the Senna. This is going to be the trade, and it could be First Blood going over towards the side of Northeastern. It is indeed, as they're going to double flash with that level advantage. And they'll be able to grab that one. Not really anything NIU could do once that stun did land. And uh, yeah, First Blood going over towards the bot lane here of Northeastern with a really early uh, aggressive play, and they'll look to snowball that lead very heavily, seeing their previous matchups. That's uh, pretty much the method of operations here for the Northeastern Huskies. They look to take an early lead, especially through the bot lane, and see if they can't uh, control that advantage. Now, that is a level lead here for Alpha Squirtle. It will be evened out very quickly, but NIU uh, will look to kind of grab the advantages and continue to scale out some of these lanes here as the bot side of Northeastern has backed away, so NIU going to look to see if they cannot steal something here uh, as there is the pings away, and it will just be the Rift Scuttle finish off by the, uh, by the Ivern here. Hecarim not going to get the chance to contest on that one. And NIU will have to come back to lane a little bit down here in the bot lane. And nice trade there from Elf Squirtle 81. I've been looking to possibly make a gank on towards this Cassiopeia in the mid lane here for uh, Space Marine 18. And NIU kind of sussing this one out. Nice do dodge on the stun. Able to grab the uh, secondary stun here is the, uh, is the Ivern, but... Not really going to turn into anything as the Conqueror does come through for Cassiopeia. And we'll be able to heal up some here. NIU going to try to get this one. It does say run. Interesting. Um, we will change that up in just a second. Uh, my apologies for the title saying the wrong thing. Um, but looking at this one, NIU going to continue to look to possibly re-gank or counter-gank, I should say, in the mid lane. Not able to grab anything off of it. And now Hecarim will just look to re-engage here and uh, nicely done pull back in, but uh, won't be able to grab anything else off of this. We'll just dodge the stun, will Hecarim. And Ivern kind of sitting there in case NIU dove a little too far, but not able to uh, grab anything is Hecarim. So instead, it'll just be the one to nothing advantage in favor of Northeastern. NIU starting to push in this bot side, grabbing the uh, level lead on the Bliss Prank so far. And this is exactly what NIU wants to do. They want to grab those level leads and continue to scale out because in a scaling matchup, NIU would definitely have the advantage here with that Cassiopeia and uh, the Misfortune as well. First Drake available to these teams is going to be the Infernal Drake. Uh, that one will mean that there will be no Infernal Soul, uh, but could be the... Uh, the Ocean Soul that uh, is heavily contested for. There's the engage coming through, though, from the set. It's going to be enough to grab one back. And Oh, the, the hook misses from the Blitzcrank. Does hit a minion, and uh, that's going to mean that it is another 
unanswered kill here for the side of Northeastern. Unfortunate from Crick's GG, looked to grab that uh, hook and try to turn things around, but wasn't able to do so. And now, NIU sitting at quite the disadvantage in the bot lane. One kill going over to Asper SoundCloud is probably the, um, the best case scenario since not both have gone on to Senna. But yeah, Senna sitting on the 1-0-1 as well. And uh, looks like this might be Northeastern looking for the early Infernal Drake. And are you not really going to have any chance to contest that as TP is going to come through from Cassiopeia. But let's just get back to lane. So it will be the side of Northeastern having the advantage on the push here. They'll grab the first Drake and they'll build their uh, gold lead up to about 1,500 gold here. Uh, and they'll have the Drake advantage here. Alpha Squirtle will have the level here. Both will be level 6, but uh, Alpha Squirtle not having any uh, mana available for himself. We'll just take that one and uh, attempt to keep farming out the top lane. Nice engage here from Alonis. Will be a full rotation and able to steal the ultimate of Cassiopeia and just land it onto her. Uh, able to grab the kill as well and 3 nothing in favor of Northeastern as NIU uh, looking to make some of these plays, but uh, Northeastern really doing well with the proactive plays. Nice hook coming through from the Blitz Crank. Even grab that one under turret. And Daisy does come through. Gonna force the flash off of Ivern, but will grab the kill with Daisy grabbing that damage, and now this is going to be the full rotation onto the Gragas, and actually forcing the flash of the Scion as Gragas got a, uh, a good rotation of damage, able to heal up with that passive, and 4-0 uh, in favor of Northeastern, but NIU looking to see where they might be able to fight back here. Uh, they have the opportunities, they just need to be able to uh, take some of these. Uh, looks like the side of Northeastern has been a little more proactive on some of these map plays, and so they have really grown their advantage here to 2,000 gold, but uh, definitely not an insurmountable uh, lead here so far, about eight minutes in for the side of Northeastern, uh, but looking at NIU, they're going to look to see if they cannot uh, grab that one. Silas is going to be able to grab the blue buff there as... Uh, Ivern does have that part of his passive where he does uh, give one of the passives over. Nice try by Alonis here on the, uh, on the, uh, what's the name of that one? Uh, but uh, the E there for him trying to, or sorry, the W, trying to get the uh, chains to land. Now, this could be a dive here from NIU as they do have the Blitzcrank in position. Uh, but with the rotation, tries to get over the wall, not able to do so. But uh, it will just mean that NIU will be able to clear out some of the vision in that top half of the team. Looks like this might be warded out, and so NIU won't have the opportunity to uh, grab the gank here. And is going to be pinged away. But uh, there's the ghost and the, the ultimate used from the... Uh, from the Hecarim here, and Flying Hippo is going to be low, but uh, with Ivern coming in, will it be enough? As Daisy is used by uh, by Ivern here, going to be enough to grab that one. Elvis Colonel's going to get the first kill here, and now they're going to look to see if they can trade it back onto the Hecarim. Flash comes through from Elvis Colonel, and he's going to be able to get away, and with a nice job, Daisy going to do a lot of damage, but will just get out. NIU going to be able to escape both of their members, and... They'll answer back and open up their accounts for this game with a really nice play, able to gank on towards this, uh, on towards the Scion. And now the dive does look to be an attempt there with the uh, center roaming towards the top lane, but not able to grab it. So nicely done by Hecarim, able to use his uh, his body slam there to get away from the uh, from the stun of Stale Bagel, and will be. NIU giving up the first Rift Herald here, as that'll go over towards the uh, towards the side of Northeastern. Now the damage does come through, and uh, Aspen Soundcloud going to take a little bit of damage. We'll trade some back here, but then I will be able to grab that first plate in the bot tier one turret, and uh, it likely is not the most worth trade. But when you consider that they grab right or the uh, kill on top of it and the plate comparison to the Herald, uh, it will be a trade that NAU is uh, willing to take. 
This looks like the Eye of the Herald went over towards Ivern, so we'll have to track him, see where he is at with that one. Uh, looks like Bloodstream could be positioning towards possible uh, towards possible hook onto the Silas. Silas will proc his uh, recall, as will Blitzcrank, so NIU will just look to reset on this one. Misfortune will also back away. Hecarim now getting aggressive, looking to see if he can't steal some of the camps of this uh, Ivern. We'll just back away from that one. Uh, Alonis just waiting on the... Um, waiting on the item there that is going to be the everfrost finish up for the side of the silas is down in cs but with those two to nothing in kills um he's going to have the advantage of not getting his mount item first also uh, of note we do see the tier of the goddess started from the cassiopeia so uh i'm going to give up a little bit of that combat power to have some more mana in the early laning phase Mountain Drake is going to be the second Drake of the game, and it looks like Northeastern has already uh, started to position towards that one. They'll clear out some of the vision here, and NIU will uh, decide to call off and not contest this one as Hecarim has started to proc his back. They'll say they don't have the ability to take it with the Cassiopeia back. So it will be the second Drake of the game. It's going to be Mountain going over towards the side of Northeastern. And they will have a 2 to nothing Drake lead. 4-1 uh, to kill lead. But their gold lead has dropped to just about 1.3 thousand. Uh, so not really the largest advantage for them. Nicely done. Dodging out the center portion of the Evercross here. But this is going to be the sun coming right back. A nice flash coming through from Cassiopeia. And I use the look from this one around. Uh, the ultimate is stolen by Silas there off the Hecarim. So we will just see... Uh, side of NIU backing away from that one and look to take that uh, that to rotate their bot lane back towards their own turret here to protect it. Uh, Silas looked to possibly try for an invade onto Hecarim's jungle. Now this is going to be Blitzcrank. Able to land the hook. Nicely done. He's going to grab one. Some of the damage will come back here as Astro SoundCloud will just clear away with that showstopper. Uh, and this slow does come through from the days here. Currently sitting on, uh, we'll check that in just a second, but currently sitting on, uh, I believe that's 47, yep, 48 now, souls. And now, nice flash forward coming through. Drag, or Blitzcrank able to get away from that one, though, with his own flash, and uh, will not be the damage coming through. Hecarim's ulti is going to be used. That's going to be the stun coming through. Now Hecarim is going to use his own ulti, and that is going to be the damage coming through as NIU nicely able to uh, gank on that engage, or counteract that engage is Hecarim, and NIU will grab one back here in the mid lane. Ivern going to go ahead and roam towards the mid lane as well, uh, and that will be the Herald put down. And with the uh, damage coming through, bot lane tier 1 already falling low, and mid lane tier 1 should fall with this charge. No, it won't yet. And this is going to be Ivern forced to flash away. Now, this could be the damage coming through. It is going to be the last auto attack comes through from misfortune so it'll be a one-for-one -one trade here and now ivern's finding himself in a bad spot as silas has shown up with the everfrost available Gragas is gonna have to try to disengage here i gotta be able to grab a flash coming through from silas and this is gonna be the cross map three for one in favor of northeastern with a really uh little bit aggressive play from niu but uh, silas able to use baby. his teleport able to uh, get back into that and now sitting on the 4-1-0 and oh on that champion. Kraken Slayer has been finished by Senna, uh, as has the uh, chem tank, the Hextech chem tank for the, um, for the set. NIU sitting on Divine Sunder, finished up for the Hecarim, and the Leandri's uh, Torment for, or sorry, Leandri's Lament for the Casio. Like we mentioned earlier, Cassiopeia is sitting on about a 20 C, 15 to 20 CS uh, advantage, although down those four kills uh, will mean that uh, the overall advantage currently is in favor of the Silas, uh, though as Cassiopeia is going to continue to farm out, we'll see if she's able to grab everything. Ice Hook coming through from Blitzcrank on the days. Will it be enough as this is going to be the heal coming back through and the uh, damage does come through from Misfortune. The L4 is finished and now it's going to be the damage onto the Blitzcrank but with Hecarim here, sure it already does fall. Looks like Astro Soundcloud could fall as well as NIU will chase this one back but with the uh, Ivern there will mean that NIU will have to disengage 
and uh, now the slow comes through. Dash comes forward and able to get the stun on onto the misfortune. Able to grab that kill right back, and this is going to be the damage coming through. Hecarim being forced out of his ulti, and now it is going to just be the stun. And Silas is able to uh, grab, sorry, uh, Ivern able to grab the assist on that one and give it over towards the set. 10 to 4 in favor of Northeastern are these kills. Definitely not a game out of reach for NIU, as we do see a tank fight going on in the top lane here. But uh, now, turret, first turret does go over towards the side of Northeastern. Flash comes forward and is not able to grab the hook. It's Blitzcrank, and with the flash, the hex flash used will mean that uh, the kill comes over towards the side of. I believe that was uh, Senna able to grab that on towards Cassiopeia. Like I mentioned earlier, NIU needing to scale back into this one. Uh, certainly not out of it quite yet, but uh, is quite the advantage coming through for Northeastern. 6,000 in this uh, in this mid lane, sorry, in this game so far. Uh, NIU will look to clear out some of this vision and look to see if they can't grab this second herald of the game. They'll start it up, won't be contested. They will give up the first of the uh, of the Soul Drakes here for that one. Will be the, I believe that's Cloud Drake. Uh, yep, it is going to be the Cloud Soul for uh, putting the side of Northeastern on the Soul Point here, though, as they will just grab that uh, that Cloud Drake uh, with four members down here and the game will mean that uh, Northeastern will just continue scale and now you will have to use that uh, rift herald to just try to uh, get this gold lead back in there uh, close down this gold lead a little bit now that's going to be the pull back onto the blitz prank as he will uh, take the damage but now he's going to be able to grab some back on towards the set but uh, with the daisy in there going to be doing a lot of damage here and so now you will have to disengage from that uh, from that contest Moonstone has been finished by Ivern. Uh, we do see the Sunfire finish up by the side of Gragas. Uh, Frostfire Gauntlet finished up for the Scion. So the only person still sitting on uh, not having a Mythic item is going to be the Blitzcrank here, piloted by Crooks GG. And are you going to be able to grab, look to grab something onto the Ivern here, but uh, not able to grab it as. Esker Soundcloud does roam up to deter NIU from continuing that fight. Silas and Cassiope have taken their fight to the bot lane, and now we do see that uh, there is the roam from the bot side of uh, of Northeastern on towards uh, on towards the Ragus here of Alpha Squirtle. He will just have to back away, and now it'll be the engage here from the ultimate coming through from Scion. Not going to be able to grab anything, but NIU could find their their agent or top laner in a bad spot. Going to be in that bad spot, but now Ivern could be uh, dying. Not going to actually take that last turn shot, so he'll be able to flash away and get out, and really well calculated on that dive by the side of Northeastern. NIU down 12 to 4 in terms of kills. And uh, now there's a nice flash forward into the stun here, but not able to grab anything as Lonus is able to grab that one, stealing the ultimate from the Hecarim. And then Cassiopeia missing her own ultimate means that uh, NIU not going to be able to grab anything off that one. Unfortunate from the side of NIU as they are just uh, misplaying some of these. Uh, need to take a breath and calm down and see if they can't. Uh, can't get some of this advantage back. PCH going to look to see if he can't clear out this top side wave so that they might take some damage. A nice damage onto the Senna, but she is going to be on or, uh, able to get out of this one. Could be the dive on. Yeah, everybody is just going to go towards the Scion, make sure that he can't uh, get any of the kills here. And NIU will grab one back and uh, instead will give up the turret for that. Will at least shut down the Scion, able to grab their second kill onto him. Uh, we'll need to continue to grab some of these advantages. The good thing for NIU is that they do have 
300 gold bounties on the Silas and the Set, uh, and then a 150 gold bounty on the uh, on the Senna. So they do have the ability, with a couple of kills here, to really uh, really turn this game back around and kind of negate some of this gold lead that currently sits at 8,000 for the side of Northeastern. And now you will have to contest this next dragon that should be spawning anywhere around two and a half minutes here. Um, so we will likely see that the, excuse me, the next fight that these two teams go for. Uh, Baron has spawned, but NIU likely not going to look for that one, and uh, Northeastern really doesn't have the option so far. A nice stun comes through, set could be farmed out on this one, as a nice stun does come back through, but there is the ultimate coming through from Misfortune. The bullet time is going to be enough, and uh, Space Brain will die, but Stale Bagel is still alive. He's going to actually get away, as there goes the uh, the kill from Flying Hippo on towards the Hecarim, able to re-engage there, and NIU just getting kind of out-rotated here by the side of Northeastern. This will be Drake when it does spawn, unless Northeastern does choose instead to go for the Baron, and that does look to be the call here with Hecarim dead for another 16 seconds. Doesn't look like NIU has really any opportunity to take that one. And there it is. Uh, with the Turbo Chem Tank finally finished up for Blitzcrank, uh, did, doesn't look like that pick really has had the same amount of value that NIU would like to have. Uh, NIU will look to see if they can't get the steal with the Gragas. We'll just be Gragas ultimate use. Uh, actually stolen here by... It's like, there's the flash coming through. And uh, actually, able to get Gragas back into the pit. But now it's a nice opportunity for the steal. NIU's going to steal the Baron with the auto attack as Alpha Squirtle 81. What are they doing there? Leaving him able to take that. And now four members of NIU will have the Baron able to get back in this game. Unfortunately for NIU, they are down so much right now that this isn't a single-handed get back in the game free card as Northeastern will start up this second Cloud Drake and NIU might have to just give up the soul here. Um, they are going to look to see if they can't get a steal as now four members of all five members of Northeastern are around that Drake. So they're not going to be able to get that one. NIU will elect to hold on to the Baron buffs in exchange for the Cloud Soul. 16 to 5 are the kills and 8,000 gold advantage for the side of Northeastern, but NIU does have the Baron buffs on four of their members. They'll have to play out these fights near perfectly moving forward, but uh, with a near perfect fight, they do have a route to a comeback so far in this game. They do have more turrets standing, allowing them to take some gold here. Uh, if they even out that the turret count at four, they would have the ability to uh, get that gold back to close to even. Looks like NIU will just elect to uh, answer some of the split push. Uh, we'll sit back a little bit and uh, see where the side of Northeastern wants to push Vision into. Uh, it looks like Northeastern will just clear out some of this Vision in the uh, in the top side jungle. Sorry, the bot side jungle here for NIU. Uh, it does look like it is going to be three members of the squad there for Northeastern as compared to just one for NIU. So NIU will have to rotate here. Looks for a possible dive and now Greg is going to be able to uh, just deter that one with the Blitzcrank coming across, looking for a hook. Not able to grab it, but will just uh, deter Northeastern from continuing that push in the bot lane. With the barrel coming through, will be the hook landing. I actually forced the flash off of Daze with a nice hook there from Krix, uh, zoning for it, but not able to grab anything else now. Nice dive right back in and able to dash away. Ultimate doesn't really grab anything as the explosive cast does come through from the side of NIU and the Gragas here. Uh, and NIU will just continue to play this one out. Everfrost does get the stun as it's in the center. Now, this could be the stun coming through from the side of Northeastern. Stun lock does happen, but Gragas able to get out of that one and uh, will stay alive. Now, Northeastern will continue to try to take this bot tier two turret as Daisy has been summoned here for Ivern. And uh, NIU, not gonna be able to land the hook, but we'll just clear out this Daisy. Turret will fall, but NIU will be able to uh, keep their members alive here. And it looks like on the side of Northeastern, they will just uh, look to continue to farm out these uh, these turrets and continue to scale. NIU looking to do the same, but uh, with the threat of the uh, 
very large lead here from Northeastern. Northeastern now going to attempt to uh, push out this mid-tier 2. They're just going to have to give it up is NIU. Uh, the Northeastern proving to be a formidable opponent so far, which we expected. Uh, they'll continue to just uh, push these advantages. NIU going to have to see if they cannot uh, win a team fight here, as Northeastern has been winning all of these team fights so far. And Silas working up to his reputation as the true damage dealer there, um, and Senna getting to the point in the game where she's able to do her fair share of the uh, of the DPS as well. Looking at this one, uh, we do see NIU now. Second Baron should spawn in just about two minutes. NIU might get looked for a pick here onto the set. He is just going to back away after clearing out that first ward, so NIU won't be able to grab anything off of that one. Red buff is available here if uh, it looks like Silas will take that, as well as Senna did take it as well. And all of NIU's outer turrets have fallen so far, so NIU will have to uh, look to see if they cannot uh, get a nice dissing, or sorry, a nice fight here. Now they will uh, just look to get some poke and uh, make sure that they are not stunned up there by the um, by the stun from the Senna. Senna at a point now where she's actually able to start farming. Uh, 48 CS already for her, um, so definitely at the point where uh, she is starting to get back into this game in terms of the levels. Um, if there's one saving grace for NIU, it's that their solo lanes are even in levels so far. Uh, the Hecarim has fallen quite a bit behind, um, and there it is uh, seeing the uh, contest here. NIU is going to accidentally... Hecarim will run into uh, a couple members of Northeastern. That's just going to be the stun lock here coming through. Set going to pull him back, and Hecarim is able to use his own ultimate, but with the Baron having uh, timed out here, it will look like NIU uh, will need to uh, kind of regroup and see what they can find on that one. Recall does come through here, and... Uh, Blitzcrank just going to try to get his next item. Uh, NIU, the, or the Baron, is spawning here in just about uh, just about 20 seconds. Uh, looks like that might be what we're supposed to go in for. And actually, Gragas is just going to run right into uh, two members waiting of the, of the Northeastern composition. And with his uh, explosive cast coming through, not going to be able to grab anything off of that one. NIU may look to take the uh, Infernal, or sorry, the... Uh, DL. Uh, the, the dragon here. My apologies. Um, but it is going to be the Baron going over towards the side of Northeastern, and Hook does miss from the Blitzcrank, and actually it is just going to be two members of Northeastern grabbing that Baron, meaning that NIU really can't take this, uh, can't take this Drake uncontested. And now they are just going to start to burn it down. And it is the... Elder Drake started up, burnt about half health, but now with the sun, and now you're able to grab one. Some damage does come through, but is it going to be enough? There's going to be one kill back, and really not going to be anything able. There even is the steel coming through from Ivern, and the base. The teleport comes through. Oh, geez. Scion able to get his teleport in towards the mid lane, uh, whereas we see the Gragas teleporting in towards the uh, Dragon Pit. Not able to cancel that one, 22 to six. This first game is gonna go over towards Northeastern and uh, definitely looking like there are some things that Anu needs to uh, needs to kind of address here moving into game number two. But uh, definitely not the, not the uh, worst early game, but definitely did scale for the side of Northeastern. Here you go. You guys will be able to see here's the blue win number one. We'll jump into game number two very shortly as NIU looks to take something back but not able to grab anything. Now Hecker and Gus come through and uh, there they to be the Nexus. Game one will go over towards Northeastern and GG. NIU will have to uh, fight back and look for the reverse sweep on this one.
NIU may look to take the uh, Infernal, or sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dragon here. My apologies. Um, but it is going to be the Baron going over towards the side of Northeastern, and the hook does miss from the Blitz Frank, and actually it is just going to be two members of Northeastern grabbing that Baron, meaning that NIU really can't take this, uh, can't take this great uncontested. Now they are just gonna start to burn it down. And it is the it's the Elder Grey started up. Burns about half health, but now with the sun, and I even grab one. Some damage does come through, but is it gonna be enough? There's gonna be one kill back, and really not gonna be anything to angle. There even is the steel coming through from Ivern and the base. The teleport comes through. Oh geez, Scion able to get his teleport in towards the mid lane, uh, whereas we see the Dragus teleporting in towards the uh, Dragon Pit. Not able to cancel that, 22 to 6. This first game is going to go over towards Northeastern, and uh, definitely looking like there are some things that NIU needs to uh, needs to kind of address here moving into game number two. But uh, definitely not the not the, uh, worst early game, but definitely did scale for the side of Northeastern. Here you go. Oh my god, I'm muted again. Sorry about that one. Uh, back into game number two. Uh, they are getting me all tossed and turned around as uh, this is already back into game number two. Um, really quickly, actually. But yeah, it is going to be the Camille, Seraphine, and Ivern band away by the side of NIU. Then Seraphine, or sorry, uh, Rel, Udir, and Senna band away by the side of Northeastern. Misfortune is going to be banned by the uh, by the side of or picked away by the side of NIU. I am so sorry, but Bard going to be picked up for Ask for SoundCloud here, uh, and we will see if that's indeed the direction that uh, they want to go with that one. But Bard, yeah, got to be the pickup here as the support for Northeastern. They definitely want to play through their support and uh, see if they cannot get the advantages that way. Uh, they'll go through and hover a few different champions here. Likely going to be the Kaisa that is picked up. And that is indeed going to be the pick, uh, something that we've seen a lot of priority on. It's been kind of the main matchup so far in the competitive League of Legends uh, area here is the um, is that Kaisa into uh, into the Misfortune matchup. Uh, it was Jin earlier instead of Misfortune, but uh, has been changed around. And now you will pick up that Nar to make sure that they get it since it was available and left up. And then they will also get the Anivius for, for Space Marine 18, something he is very comfortable on. And as soon as it was left up, you had to know that they were going to pick it. So they will go ahead and pick up that one on the blue side for game number two of this best of three. Grave's going to be picked up for the side of Northeastern. And uh, that is an interesting pick. We've, uh, I know that NIU had noticed some, uh, some kind of, uh, 
tendencies on that champion, so we'll see if they are able to uh, play into those. Looking now, uh, Northeastern is going to look for the ban here. They'll grab their uh, next one. Does look like that's going to be this, uh, the Lilia taken off the board, and NIU will answer with the uh, Echo pick. Or, sorry, the Echo ban. Uh, keeping that away from Alonis. Uh, maybe the with the Silas, they felt that that wasn't the true uh, the true problem. It could be the uh, that they're looking at the um, at that Ivern as the true problem of the last game. Really able to let uh, let Northeastern scale, and Hecarim is going to be banned away. So uh, now with the Graves already picked, it'll mean that uh, NIU will have lower priority on the jungle here. Um, but they do have their mid laner and their top laner picked blind already. Looking to see, this will likely be the uh, the mid lane matchup here. Uh, but NIU really keeping away some of these counter picks. So uh, Northeastern having to show some of their uh, some of their picks. Looks like it might be the Gragas into the Nar, and indeed it is. So that'll be going up towards Flying Hippo, able to play that uh, that AP style of. Uh, top laner and very tanky as well. Uh, we'd imagine that that'll go towards the more tank style build here. Uh, NIU, we'll see where they want to go with the support. I would uh, uh, be interested to see. It is going to be the Skarner Hovered and it's going to be the Jarvan instead for PCH. So he gave us the tease of the Skarner. He wanted that one a little bit, but. Uh, Definitely not um, not the one he's going to play here. It is going to be the Jarvan, so not as strong of a pick, but definitely something that he's very comfortable on. And Crix is going to go ahead and grab the Alistair, so uh, that'll be locked in now. So something that is definitely very lane-focused as compared to the Bard that is very much a roaming-focused champion. Uh, Alistair can roam, too. If you want to play that roaming bull, then you uh, will be able to... Uh, get some of those ganks towards the mid lane, and especially if the matchup is good here in the mid lane, then NIU might have quite the advantage there with some of that dunk availability. Silas is going to be the pick here for Alonis once again. Uh, looks like we'll see if it is going to be Stale Bagel as the support and uh, Ask for SoundCloud as the um, jungle. I'd imagine it's likely Stale Bagel on that Graves, but we will uh, we'll verify that as this time runs out. Once we get to 20 seconds, they're not allowed to make any moves. Um, so looking at that for this one now. My apologies for the game audio repeating a little bit earlier. Uh, was trying to make sure everything was in order and uh, let it repeat over the um, over the broadcast. Uh, and thank you guys for letting me know that it was muted earlier. My apologies. Um, like I said, they are uh, they're going very fast in between these games, and it's uh, catching me off guard a little bit here. So, uh, with five seconds left, let's go ahead and look at uh, at the first game, and I will give you guys just a minute to catch your breaths, and we'll be back in three minutes with game number two. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be into game number three very shortly, looking at the uh, runes and summoner spells. It's going to be very standard, same things as last game, except this time uh, PCH is not running that ghost. He's running the flash. Uh, we do see this time flying hippo. It's going to be the arcane comet on the Gragas, going for a little bit more of the AP build. Now are going to be taking the fleet footwork. Phase rush for the graves, whereas we see the conqueror on the... Um, on the Jarvan, and uh, there you go. Oh, whoops. Let me get a pause going for you, because I noticed that we are just a bit off on this one. So we should be into game any minute now, but let's go ahead and swap this up for you so that you guys can see what is going on. And there and there you go sorry about that one we are into game number two here of NIU versus Northeastern. It's going to be the side of uh, Northeastern. Let's look at the runes and masteries and actually already paused. So uh, we had a, looks like there was a, a technical break. And we will catch up in time here. As there we are, we're all caught up anyway. So perfect. We had the ability with that pause. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at the runes and the uh, and the summoner spells from everybody. As we mentioned, all solo lanes taking the TPs. We're gonna see the smite and flash from both jugglers, uh, heal and flash from the AD carries, and ignite and flash from the supports. On the side of uh, let's look at the masteries. Sorry, the runes as well. As NIU gonna look for this one. Uh, as there could be, if he dashes over this wall, there he is. He's going to go on in, and this is going to be the stun in the first blood going over to NIU. They knew this play was coming, as he does this every time on Graves, and NIU will pick up the immediate first blood on the invade, just counterplaying it. Graves using his, or his flash is ready. He did not burn flash for that first blood, but let's go ahead and take that one. Now let's calm it down for just a second. And let's look at these uh, runes for just a second again. On the Gnar, we do see that it's going to be the Fleet Footwork. Then we do see Conquer on the Jarvan, Electrocute on Anivia, Press the Attack on Misfortune, and on the Alistair, we see the Phase Rush. On the side of Northeastern, instead, we see the Arcane Comet for Gragas, Phase Rush for, uh, for Graves, sorry. Silas is running Fleet Footwork. Press the, or not press the attack, that is Hail of Blades on the Kaisa. So, uh, very interesting choice of rune there. As well as, uh, it is going to be Electrocute for the Bard. Showing that he's probably going to play a little bit more for a uh, lane presence here. And already, we're getting the nice stun coming through from Master Soundcloud. Able to be traded back a little bit, but uh, more damage does come through from the side of uh, Northeastern than on the side of NIU. Nar did get that, uh, did get the kill credit on that first blood, and so he is sitting on a long sword as well as his Dorn's blade. Uh, NIU actually going to be grabbing a nice little trade there onto the bard, forcing him to use his uh, his uh, health potions. Though he does have his biscuit available as well, and Space Marine 18 getting the first, uh, getting the level first is going to be able to grab that one now as he is uh, moving on. Looking ahead here, uh, this time NIU does back off as they uh, do get level two second once again, but just like last game where they were uh, they were immediately 
engaged on as soon as uh, Northeastern hit level two. This time NIU won't find that one. Flash gun already be used by Days. He's going to be getting out of that one. But now it's going to be the kill coming through as NIU is going to be donating that one over to Summer Next D. And what a play. Able to get that gank by the side of the Jarvan. Uh, didn't land his EQ combo, his flag and drag combo, but was able to grab the assist as there was nowhere that Kaisa could go once she had already flashed. And this puts NIU in the position up two to nothing, three minutes into this game. Uh, Jarvan is in a bad spot here. He's already used his, uh, his stanchion, is gonna be in, uh, not gonna be using the flash. Flash could be used now by Graves, and this could be NIU finding a good spot. The, uh, the, Smoke screen does come through, and the nice stun. Summoner XD is going to be forced to flash and will burn down, but will stay at 10 health and will live off that one. NIU takes the lead here in this game. Graves is going to be forced to use his flash. The summoner spells do come off of the uh, misfortune as well. And uh, to make sure that this dive doesn't happen, Jarvan is just going to stick around here in the bot lane. And now there's the engage on towards Days. Uh, Cricks will grab it, but will just back away as the Void Seeker will come through from days, meaning that uh, Alistair will be forced to back and uh, will just be the advantage over to NIU. Misfortune already coming back to lane, does have double longsword now, compared to just the single longsword on the. Uh, on the Kaisa. The other thing of note here, that is a health potion on Kaisa, whereas Misfortune does have the refillable, so has been able to opt into that a little earlier on uh, for the healing here. Level advantage is on the side of Northeastern. Gonna miss the cannon minion there, unfortunately, uh, just due to the wave uh, being pushed in. But uh, NIU taking this early advantage, and first Drake is gonna spawn here in just about 20 seconds. We'll see which one that is. Both junglers posturing towards the top side, so very likely not gonna see quite the early uh, dragon stacking that we saw in the last game. Nar going to go ahead and just roam through. They see that Graves has invaded onto this Jarvan's jungle, but will be spotted by a ward, so Nar won't be able to grab anything there. We'll just have to back away from this fight. 8.2 to 8, uh, 8.3, so about a three to 400 gold bleed in favor of NIU here. Uh, Bard sitting here waiting for the possible stun as there's just a nice little bit of damage. He is going to attack from the brush and Jarvan will actually go ahead and, uh, and just take this scryer plant to make sure that they have vision over this ocean drake. Jarvan will go ahead and start it up. PCH going to start that one up for NIU. Actually, no, we'll just go through the pit as Kaisa is staying. If she stays a little too much longer... Uh, this could be a gank. Ah, nice flash forward from the Alistair. Able to get the headbutt pulverized combo. Nice flag and drag as well. And Days is not going to get out of that one. That's going to be donated over to Summoner XD. 2-0-1 on the Misfortune already in this game. That means NIU is going to be able to start up this uh, Ocean Drake. Bar going to look to try to stop NIU from doing it. As he's going to get a little bit of damage back on towards the Jarvan. But with Hecarim roaming over... Or sorry, Alistair roaming over as well. That'll mean that NIU is able to grab this first Drake of the game, the Ocean, 6 minutes 25 seconds in, and already starting the Dragon stacking. Uh, NIU playing this early game much better than they did in the last one. Knocking on wood there as... Uh, you, you never want to be too confident in it just because this game can turn on a dime, but... Uh, yeah, very, very well done to get that early lead here by NIU. Moving forward, we do see now that uh, NIU is going to grab the, uh, the push on in the top lane. Snar will grab it and just back away. But Bard is roaming on towards this uh, towards this mid lane. Alistair is trailing there. That's a nice stun attempt, but now it's just going to be traded on back. and. Now, Alistair is going to be able to get the stun onto Bard. He's going to be forced to flash, and the wall comes through, and Nivea is going to be donating that one. Four to nothing in favor of NIU here, and they're the ones making the aggressive map plays here uh, after game one, where they were roamed on instead. Alistair now going to be able to clear out the vision. Crix GG with 100% kill participation. He's the only one left on the team with that. Nice little double tap here from the, uh, from the Misfortune. There's the 
the headbutt pulverized combo. Heal gonna come out from the Kaisa and not gonna be enough. She's gonna try to trade that one back. Heal comes out from Misfortune as well to keep the Alistair alive. And that is a 5-0 lead in favor of the Huskies of Northern Illinois. They are uh, sitting on an 0-0-5 Alistair. Now it's a pause here as mid did DC should be ready. Mid from Northeastern, I should say. Looking at it, NIU playing really well this early game. I uh, I want to say that that might have flustered the side of Northeastern a little bit to have that level one, uh, level one, pre-planned out play. But uh, they knew that he was possibly going to do this. We do see if you look at the map though uh, that when we get done with this pause, we may have a bit of a. Um, here comes the unpause. But uh, Graves is stealing the blue buff here for Jarvan. He's going to be able to grab that and before Jarvan's able to get there. So that will mean that Jarvan will just uh, have to run away from that one. NIU, though, with the large advantage, a thousand gold lead across the map here. Able to grab this uh, priority. Luckily for Northeastern, they do have about a 20 CS advantage in the jungle. So that's where a lot of this uh, gold that's starting to stack up in the kills for NIU is kind of equalized uh, by Stale Bagel. Now, Alistair is going to spot out this Graves. We'll just run away or walk away from that one. First, uh, Rift Herald has, has spawned, so we'll see if NIU wants to take that one. As uh, instead, it looks like Alistair will just walk over a ward. Jarvan will grab his own red buff, and uh, NIU will just look to continue to farm out some of these waves. Elster going to go ahead and clear out this ward in the bush to make sure that he has the opportunity for an early aggressive play. Jarvan will step over a ward, so not really going to be able to grab anything on this gank attempt. And uh, now it will be a 3v3 in the bot lane if either team wants to show up here. Uh, Anivia might show up as well. This is going to be TP channeled in from the Silas, which will mean NIU will have to back away. And uh, now Alistair in a good spot to be able to do so. Anivia channeling hers as well will mean that uh, NIU will just back off of this one. And it will just be a trade of teleports uh, to make sure that both teams are not able to grab the aggressive plays here. Nice damage coming on to Alonus from the Anivia combo. And NIU uh, able to take that one. You will take that play with the teleports expended uh, will mean as well that this is now a nice trade on the top lane and ooh, able to actually stun up is playing Hippo to mean that the Gnar ultimate doesn't come through. But uh, yeah, across the board, you will take that if you're NIU to just take an even play um, when you're already in the lead. Now, Alpha Squirtle is going to be taken very low here and nice amount of damage coming through from Anivia. The Alistair ulti does give you a little bit more tankiness, but not against the random damage. Now, this could be the ultimate does come through from the Jarvan. It is going to be the first kill going over towards uh, towards the side of uh, Northeastern, and uh, that will just be traded away. Nice flash coming through from Alistair to make sure that that is secured. The kill onto the Bard uh, will be jungle for the support trade. And NIU will then just take the uh, take the fight here to make sure that they uh, aren't pushed away from anything else. We'll see if uh, Nar wants to go in on this one. He decides instead not to. With the uh, body slam available, will mean that Gragas can interrupt and keep him from uh, taking this uh, from taking this ultimate. Nicely done, actually. Good stay. Good. Uh, trade there. The Absand and a Duck, so that's what it's called. Able to get there, and uh, Jarvan, now with a nice trade, we'll see if he's able to grab it, and nice ultimate coming through from Gragas to disengage, but uh, Jarvan will force that one out. Now sup DC, uh, so Northeastern has paused again. And uh, you, have to, you have to be curious as to how bad the internet across the country is going this week with uh, so many DCs of the ADC from Kent State earlier in the week. And now we're seeing the same thing from Northeastern. Um, you know, you have to wonder if all of these internet service providers are based out of Texas and all the, you know, just that. I apologize. That's uh that's a joke out of, um, out of uh, 
not coming from a good place. And so I apologize to that one. I uh, apologize to anybody that's in, uh, affected in Texas. Um, obviously, our hearts go out to everybody there that uh, may be affected. Um, the, the, just hopefully they'll get their uh, power on as soon as possible. Um, but the definitely the, uh, the point here being that seeing as this is in uh, Boston, Northeastern, we are hoping that none of their uh, internets are coming out of there. Um, so that would be the hope here. And as well, Kent State in Ohio. So um, not really as relevant there. Uh, but yes, a poor taste joke. So I apologize for that one. Anyway, looking back at it, we do see the... Uh, the... Uh, the continuation of this contest as uh, Chemtank has been finished by the Gragas, so he will go tanky. Divine Sunderer finished for Gnar. Uh, it looks like we will see more of a... Uh, we will see the Iron Spike Whip coming out for the Jarvan, so we'll see where he wants to go with this one. Uh, and I will just clear out some of this vision. Second Drake is going to be the Cloud, so with the Ocean and the Cloud already available, we are going to see either a Mountain Soul or an Infernal Soul, both of which are going to help NIU if they're able to grab that. Uh, Looks like NIU might be the first to this dragon fight. There is wards on this pit, so NIU will have to clear those away before they start up this objective. And they uh, will clear out the wards and then may look to collapse onto the dragon. Nivia is just going to roam back towards the mid lane. And NIU is going to spot out the spot out the bard, able to get the nice magical journey to get away from that one. Uh, with the Silas already back, will mean that... Uh, there's the there's the stun coming through and able to get the damage back. Healed has to come through though as well. Uh, looks like actually Healed did not come through, I should say, from the side of Northeastern. And they're going to grab that one back and able to grab the dragon off of that fight. Anivia looks to possibly collapse. And instead, NIU will just have to back away from that one. Now, Bard and Silas able to grab the nice fight onto the Anivia. And that is going to be the egg dropping. So she may be going down here. As indeed, that is going to be the kill. And now, actually, nice stun. Way to turn it around. Oh, almost. As uh, Epson and the Duct is enough to get that kill back. I, you know, you heard me there. I was, uh, I thought that might have been the kill. What a nice attempt there by Elf or by Space Marine. Unfortunately, not able to get quite enough damage off in time, but almost had the, uh, the turnaround and grabbing the kill and possibly even the double if that had gone through. Graves going to go ahead and roam up towards the top side. Uh, he is building that level lead up against uh, Jarvan once again. So despite Jarvan having the kill participation, uh, this is a Gnar now procced into Mega Gnar. So we'll see if he re-engages on this one. And instead he will just back, uh, we'll just clear out the wave. Graves will back away and try to clear out some of his, uh, some of his jungle. Misfortune sitting 3-0-1 on the Noon Quiver as well as the Swifty Boots. Uh, should be with a... Just did back, so won't be uh, recalling to grab the uh, the full Mythic item quite yet. Uh, Kraken Slayer has been finished by Kaisa, as expected. Did go the um, the Mythical item before the uh, before the Serrated Dirk here, so um, does go with the earlier spike, but not as powerful generally. Misfortune now with the pickaxe and the noon quiver in her inventory. Leandri's torment is finished by the uh, by the Anivia. Now, nice flash comes through, and there's a flash follow. Ultimate used by the Gra uh, by Graves. Now, tur uh, TP does come through as well by the top laner here, and this could be the damage coming through from the side of of Northeastern. They're gonna grab one back, and now Alonis is in a bad spot, but we'll be able to get out with the uh, with the dash over the wall there. And NIU not really able to grab anything. Now, Nar is teleporting down towards the bot lane, is able to grab the damage on. Now, heal and uh, stun comes through, but nice stun onto the wall as well, and able to grab some damage here. Will he be able to grab it on today's? And now the heal comes through. Actually, the stun as well, but Greg, uh, Graves is here as well. Teleport is going to come through from the Anivia. Is it going to be enough? And indeed, it's going to be just the teleport and the slow coming through. Bard's going to be able to get himself out as well as his jungler. But here's Alistair. He's going to chase on there. They may look for the dive on towards this Bard. And indeed, they are going to just call that off as there is the wave. 
getting in towards the turret. And you will instead take that, uh, keep the farm lead, or sorry, keep the kill lead seven to six, but we'll be down in gold here. Rift Herald has been summoned in the bot lane. It won't grab any plates, but it will grab first turret here for NIU. And uh, Gragas going to look to try to proxy on the top side. First turret does go down in favor of NIU. The charge didn't even go through, so NIU may look to grab a second turret with this one. Uh, they'll have to be careful as the Graves is there, as well as the Bard and the Silas. But uh, now charge will finish and we'll get half of that tier one turret in the bot side now alistair's here to be able to headbutt back in nicely done to pulverize to make sure that that does not get over the wall nice disengage and forcing the ulti out from this gragas flash able to be saved by gragas but uh, really nice play there by alistair making sure that the blast cone didn't just get the uh gragas out to safety here by Crix. GG. Nice flash coming through from Alonis and not able to grab the stun, but able to grab the slow and the then the freeze. Now, nice flag and drag combo, but a little too late. And now is going to be the trade of ultis here from the double Jarvan ulti and will be the kills going over towards the side of Northeastern. It's eight to seven in favor of Northeastern. Turrets are in favor of NIU. Uh, that's the main thing here as we do see that the Kaisa is just being able to free farm and is gaining a bit of a farm lead despite being down 3 to 1 in kills. Um, but NIU will have to see if they can uh, continue to put on this pressure as they now are looking a little bit behind with that 0 4 and 4 on the Jarvan. Anivia is the one being focused down here by Northeastern. They are playing to, um, to try to grab that advantage. And Anivia, if this Silas doesn't back off pretty quickly, uh, could be able to grab something here. Silas finally will uh, will back away, but it will just be the recall. Nice job being able to get off the uh, mystical journey. And ulti does mean that Bard is going to find himself very low and could give NIU the advantage as this uh, next Drake will spawn in just about 20 seconds here. It will be the mountain drake and the mountain soul for this game nice job looking for the stun not able to grab it and this could be anivia in a bad spot flash forward comes through from guard it is going to be the kill over towards the anivia just melting very quickly that is a gale force on the graves and uh, now the stun comes through with the everfrost and niu going to be re-engaged on here by the side of northeastern and this could be the fight that northeastern wants Nice headbutt pulverize onto three, but not really going to be able to get anything off of that. NIU will just uh, have to hold their turret, and Graves will start up this second dragon. There's the Ibsan Abduct, not able to grab it, and uh, NIU will just have to uh, grab Meganar here and look to re-engage on this fight. Now, now there is the fight onto, uh, onto the rest of the members of NIU. Nice stun coming through from the Gnar, not able to grab enough, as there is just going to be enough from Alonis. And that'll be the delayed ace coming through from the side of Northeastern. Five for nothing in favor of those Huskies. First, Mountain Drake will start up or will be taken by Northeastern here as well. And 3-0-8 uh, and eight on this Silas with the Everfrost. Really well played by this uh, Alonus in the mid lane. NIU really struggling to find an answer to some of these engages that... Uh, Silas is able to find and the split push that he has. Uh, Anivia playing well, but really focused. Um, so we'll have to uh, see if if she's able to be protected in a team fight. Uh, but definitely an interesting scenario for NIU. Looking across the board, there's once again three members of Northeastern with bounties. NIU, if they're able to shut them down, would be able to grab some major gold back. And there's actually the steal of the ultimate, but the uh, stun back. And actually, this could be Silas dying to the turret. And actually, with Jarvan roaming over, it will be the kill. NIU able to find that shutdown. 350 gold goes on to the Jarvan. The Kaisa is just free farming in the mid lane. Anivia roaming over as well. This will be the Alistair also looking for a possible engage here for NIU. Gragas is going to be pushing in the bot lane. And it will just be the side of Northeastern trying to get away. And Alistair able to just follow up using the chem tank to just slow or to get the speed up and roaming through. NIU will have to take this mid lane tier 1 turret. 
as it's about half health and they do have the advantage on the positioning. Now, nice use of the uh, of the Gale Force to get away from the Bard ultimate and uh, we'll just be NIU grabbing a bunch of damage onto this turret. It could fall depending on how much uh, they want to chase. This is going to be Gale Force used now by the Graves. A nice slow coming through. Nice damage coming through as well. And actually, NIU going to be caught on the outside here as nice headbutt pulverize comes through to make sure that NIU doesn't lose their AD carry right away. Uh, damage back through by this Anivia and the Gnar means that Misfortune is just going to be chased by the Bard. We'll see if she's able to get away from this one. Also, Meganar is available, so we'll see what NIU is able to do here. They are able to get their Misfortune away. And now Ultimate does come through, stealing the uh, Nar stun and able to get his own Ultimate off. Really well done by NIU to be able to get their ADC out of here. And they may look to re-engage with this fully healed up Anivia. Nice job looking for the stun, not able to grab it, but Alistair is chasing away. And NIU, oh, nice, nice attempt, but not able to grab the headbutt pulverized combo. With the flash there is Alistair, meaning that NIU will just have to disengage and are down 4,000 gold and six kills so far. Their top lane turret will go down as well. Nobody there to grab the additional gold. So now this could be the, uh, the try for the steal. There is the Tempered Fate coming through. Anivia able to get the nice flash. There's the ultimate. Actually not able to grab anything. And Anivia able to put enough damage between herself that Alonis is only able to grab... Well, he'll grab two now. But uh, there's the Gragas grabbing the kill on towards Misfortune. Not able to grab so actually. And uh, we'll just look to grab that. And Ooh, nice dash. Uh, Alpha Squirtle not able to grab the kill. And uh, Flying Hippo will get out of that one with a really nice uh, escape. 16 to 8, the kills in favor of Northeastern. 39,000, eh, 40,000 to 35,000, a 5,000 gold lead in favor of Northeastern. 1 and 7 on this Jarvan, 1 and 5 on the Anivia. NIU looks like they need to, uh, the, the Bard is really, Bard and uh, Silas are their two main uh, control points here for the side of Northeastern, and then IU really needs to find a way to shut those guys down with the Cosmic Drive also available on the Silas, already uh, looking to have really low cooldowns on all of his abilities here. Anivia, not able to finish off her second item quite yet, uh, is sitting just on the Leandri's Lament, um, and Nar could be in a bad spot here as this is going to be the follow-up the three members of Northeastern are going to get there. That's going to be the stun coming through. A nice stun as well, but the re-engage comes through from the side of Northeastern. They're going to commit three to the bot side, and Nar is dead, so they will grab this next turret. NIU might just be able to uh, hold this turret and uh, really not even able to do that, as this could be the dive coming through from the side of Northeastern. There is the, uh, the combo does come through. Alistair is going to be low now. The level advantage definitely on the side of the Kaisa. Misfortune, despite being 3 1 and 1, is down 10, or 3 levels, sorry, 10 levels, level 10 to level 13. And uh, NIU just really being starved of their experience with this bard. And there's the, just the re engage on towards the Anivia and just bursted down. Um, not really anything NIU can do here. This is going to be the series going over towards Buff or Northeastern. My apologies, almost called them Buffalo there. And now you will have to go back to the drawing board, look to see what they can do uh, against this Miami team on on uh, Saturday, more than likely. This one's not over till it's over, though, so we do want to be careful about saying that uh, Archangel's staff and Seraph's uh, has been purchased and then transformed into Seraph's Embrace here for the Anivia, so. Uh, lots of damage will start to come through from her, uh, as well as the Sterix is finished up for Nar. We'll see how NIU is able to play this one out, as uh, now down about 7,500 gold. Looks like this might be Northeastern posturing on towards the Baron. NIU needing to take this mid lane tier 1 turret to really have any semblance of map pressure, uh, but... I don't really know that they have the opportunity to do so. Graves going to make sure, and Greg is going to just try to zone off the side of NIU from this Baron, and there it will uh, likely be started up here by the side of Northeastern. Yeah, there it is. Uh, they'll start it up. Won't be able to finish it, I don't believe. 
Actually, they may, as Silas is looking for the flank on the outside there. And Northeastern is just burning down this Baron. And are you not really able to get in towards the pit? So it will just be the Baron going over towards Northeastern here. There's the slow. Alistair ulti is stolen. And I you will look for the steel, won't even be able to grab it. And there is the stun coming through. This fortune is going to be stunned. And uh, actually, sorry, that's the Jarvan stunned up. But uh, Anivia now in a bad spot. Able to grab one back. Not not even that. Yes, we'll be able to grab it with the burn down with the Leandries. But it will be a two. Uh, sorry, one for, uh, I believe that's three. Yeah, from NIU. Uh, so... Northeastern really having the advantage here, 9 to 22 in terms of the kills. NIU not really having anything they can do to answer this Baron up push by the side of Northeastern. And uh, I do want to say that because the Bard was able to roam, that was the big reason why the bot lane for NIU was down so many levels. Um, as Kaisa was just able to safely grab her levels with the solo lane experience, but uh, NIU will lose a second inhibitor out of this one and. Uh, now, it will just be the map pressure coming out from the side of Northeastern. And are you down 10,000 gold almost? Uh, looks like just about 9.7 here. Um, nine and a half, give it. So, uh, they'll need to find something out of this one. Not really able to find much, but Misfortune has finished the Collector finally, so... Uh, able to grab that item and should be able to do some more of her damage at this point. However, if there's always super minions storming into the NIU base, there's not really anything they can do to uh, counteract that one. Um, so we'll see exactly how they're able to play this one out, especially with the Baron buff still on the members of Northeastern. Uh, Bard gonna look to roam towards this one, and now this could be a pick attempt on towards the on towards the Nar in the top lane. Uh, three members of Northeastern are gonna be there just to take this tier two turret in the top side. Jarvan gonna look to roam over, not gonna be able to grab it in time, and Silas will just escort this bot lane wave in, whereas Bard will uh, escort the mid lane wave in. Now the stun comes through. That's gonna be the double ulti from Nar, but. Uh, as both Silas and Nar use that ultimate, but uh, he's not going to be able to grab anything off of it. And uh, NIU will just find their top laner dead. Now just looking to clear that out. That's going to be the Tempered Fate. Not really enough there, as there goes the ultimate combo, but just out of range for the Misfortune. And now Flash comes through from the Gragas. It is going to be the Ace from the side of Northeastern. They'll actually leave Space Marine 18. And this will be the game going over towards Northeastern. 26 to 9. They will take it. And uh, NIU will look for that kill back. Not able to grab it. And uh, now there is the egg under turret or under the fountain. Damage will go through. There's the ace. Northeastern takes down the hus the NIU Huskies. 27 to 9. 2 nothing in games. And uh, there it is. As they will take their control and stay in the tie for first place in the conference. NIU moves to 7-2. They are still locked in the playoffs, but now they are locked in to at the best, I believe, they could get the uh, third seed, depending on how these last couple games play out. Um, I believe there is one way that they get the first seed. They need some help, but they can only control their destiny up to the third seed. Um, so with that, we're going to be done for the night. I don't believe after those games that we're going to get an interview. So we will go ahead and uh, get you guys the final score here as Northeastern takes down the NIU Huskies 2 to nothing in uh, very quick but very bloody games. I've been Connor Bagel Vagel. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel or to, um, or to go ahead and uh, leave a follow. Uh, also, follow or find out everything that has to do with NIU esports at our website, niu.edu slash esports. Uh, until next time on Saturday, it's been a pleasure to cast for you guys, and we'll be back on Saturday as NIU takes on Miami in another best of three. Uh, we'll also have tomorrow, my apologies. Uh, sorry, no, no, we won't have a game tomorrow. They're on a bye. Uh, but Overwatch also returns on Saturday against the um, against Northeastern. Uh, they will play with the uh, the play in a best of five there. 
That'll be at uh, 6 o'clock. The League of Legends game will be at 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back on Saturday. Uh, until then, have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.